Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer is joining us. And uh, Dave, not in the Observer. Actually, it might be in the Observer. I haven't uh, read the entire Observer yet. But the story that uh, potentially NBC, Universal, and Warner yeah. could yeah, do that, a, that one's that one's not in the Observer. This could poten- a, a potential merger of the home of Raw and the home of Dynamite. Well, wonders never cease. Of course, that happens in 2022. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to, uh, I mean, it's, I know the stories just broke today and we'll have to wait and see, you know, obviously there's talk. These stories don't break without talk. I mean, it would take uh, governmental approval, which I don't, I would hope was not a rubber stamp because this is, this is a pretty, uh, you know, this consolidation of, of media is is a very scary story, really, because it cuts down on options and things like that. And, and, you know. The ramifications of that one, I mean, far, far, far bigger than wrestling, but but they obviously would be there for wrestling as well, yes. And for anybody that just heard this and is immediately now freaking out about it, negotiations on this could not happen until the spring of 2024 because of the way that Warner Brothers and Discovery just merged. So it would not be right away, but it is something that a lot of people judging from this Hollywood Reporter article, are thinking that it's a fait accompli, that this is at some point going to happen. Yeah, it's it's a gigantic news story, you know, more than just in wrestling, yeah. All right, so the New Observer, I mean, obviously talk about fallout from the press conference, and it's been quite the last couple of days, but uh, I don't know about you, but I've kind of heard and sort of have the feeling that we may be wrapping this up soon. Well, I mean, you would think um, it should be wrapped up very soon. And, and, um, you know, as far as the future direction of AEW and things like that and what changes or non-changes are going to be made, um, you would think that that's all going to be coming out in the next, you know, week or two. Um, And what they are, I mean, we'll we'll have to find out. And um, what the end story is, um, a lot of people have been waiting for that one. What do you make of this uh, this rating for AEW this Wednesday? It was a big rating. Um, I mean, this is probably a lot of factors. It was not. Um, I mean, it was very, very big and over fifty. Which so it's kind of like the viewer number. I mean, it's the biggest number they've ever had on TBS. So it's a great number. Um, and the eighteen forty nine number was was a very, very strong number, and it was first as they've been most weeks for the last couple of months. Um, so it's it's a great number, but. Um, yeah, I mean, why they would have more over 50 viewers this week. Um, I mean, there's there was less competition for men than usual, and people are starting to, you know, and TV viewing is going up because it's not the summer. Um, but also, I mean, more than anything else, it's the product is the big part of it. So there's curiosity in the product. I mean, the thing is, they didn't open any larger than usual. They opened no, it was about very the, stable the entire way. Yeah, they opened at the same level that they usually open. So it's not like a whole bunch of new... What happened was is the people who are watching, usually people watching the show, um, AEW, will watch an average of about 70 minutes of the show, which is actually a good percentage compared to a lot of TV shows. And obviously with this one, they probably watched a lot longer. You know, I mean, it's been a long, long time since the peak in 1849s was the main event segment. Um, So... I mean, a lot of credit would go to Jericho and Danielson that people wanted to see that match. And also the um, the tag team title match did did surprisingly well, which was, um, you know, Swerve and Keith Lee against Phoenix and Pentagon. So those were the keys. The keys was maintaining the audience um, throughout the show and, and what they did to do it. And those were the key factors in doing it. So, um, you know, Danielson and Jericho was, was bigger than I think a lot of people anticipated. I mean, it... it it bodes well for this week coming up because they have a really loaded show. So, um, but it, it was also again like ESPN had women's college basketball on. So it's like the competition for men. The, you know, AEW dominated with men viewers and even beat. You know, the second hour of AEW, the nine to ten hour, was second on all of television. There was one show I believe it was on NBC um, that beat it. Um, it beat you know all the other networks. So I mean, it's it's. Um, People are watching, you know, I mean, that's that's it's it's a great feather in their cap, you know, um, so that's, you know, story. yeah, I uh, I had predicted that this show was going to do six straight weeks of one million plus as a result of just the fallout people curious and then there were going to be tournaments for a vacant title and then the champion was going to be crowned and then the fallout to the champion being crowned. 
and we're at four or five now. I forget what we're number four, we're at now. We're four. four. We're, we're at four straight. Weeks but this now. was this was higher than I expected this week. It was higher than everyone and expected. I have a I have a question because somebody asked in uh, it might have been the mailbag, but what was uh, what was Raw's fifty plus decline? Raw's fifty plus decline. I could actually look that up. It would take all of. A few seconds. Well, as you're doing that, I will yes. say that they basically stated that, you know, there's a lot of wrestling on television every week. And, oh, and they, people people aren't going to devote as many hours and people who may have watched football on Monday. Yeah, that's the theory that, that some of those fi- some of those viewers because Raw had a big drop against against uh, football and uh, and whatever the, the, else. The, the, it, the over 50 drop, um, it was around. Um, oh, I have it right here. It was down 11% from, from the week before. And is that larger than usual? or? Well, I mean, it, it did a 0.89, and it's been doing in the, like, like um, it's, 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 you know, it's lower than it's been doing, yeah, because of the, the NFL. So I, I think that one of the main reasons the show did over a million was you had two, ter- two semifinal tournament matches. It was a good show. You had a tag title match. Obviously, people were interested in, in Danielson and in Jericho, but... I mean, I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that some people chose not to watch Raw this week to watch football, and having not already seen three hours of wrestling, they decided to watch some more wrestling on Wednesday. I, I think there's something to that. I mean, I don't think that's the major reason. I don't but think I it's do. the major reason, but I think but, that might have been a portion of this, yeah. which could bode well throughout football season if there are fans that on you know certain weeks decide they're going to watch football instead of wrestling and then decide to watch uh, Dynamite on Wednesday. Well, if that's the case, then NXT is going to be a big beneficiary of this, too. Well, NXT was up, down, too. Yeah, they were down in almost all demos, but they were up 10.5% and people over 50. Yeah, NXT was up in, in over 50 by a, by a good margin, yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of NXT, we're, uh, we're moving back. They're getting rid of all the colors. And uh, Ryan Katz is back, started back on Monday. And it looks like they're going to try to do something resembling the uh, prior NXT regime. And well, the, uh, the, the person who's in charge of the company was the person who um, was in charge of the prior NXT regime. So that's his brainchild of what it should be. So I'm sure it's going to revert more closely to what was done before, before he got his power taken away. So yeah, I mean, I think that that's, that's kind of obvious. Now there were there were kind of two uh, periods of NXT Black and Gold. There was the earlier period, which was very very hot, and then once the Wednesday Night Wars kicked off, there was a second period which was not quite as hot. And one of the one of the differences besides the competition and et cetera et cetera is uh, you had a one hour show versus a two hour show. Yep. And now it's going to be a two hour show every week. And obviously, you know, great talent is going to go up to the main roster and do whatever they were doing in NXT and not getting different gimmicks or being lost in the shuffle or whatever. Although a certain amount of talent, you are going to get lost in the shuffle. But how how closely do you think this? A revamped NXT can get to the glory days of NXT, or has that ship fully sailed? Well, nothing's ever fully sailed. It, you know, in the end of the day, if the right person comes along, you know, this is star-driven business. If the right star comes along, anything is possible. Um, without that, you know, you're kind of at, you'll probably be at the level that you're at. You know, um, I don't think, I don't think anything's going to remarkably change unless something, you know, something clicks, somebody clicks. Um, you know, you you could have some good weeks here and there. You know, when you build up like a major show, but the, as a general direction, it's going to be where where they are unless something clicks. And and um, for NXT, it's harder now because it used to be years ago you had these guys that would get hot in Ring of Honor and um, and perhaps even Impact, and then WWE would get them and put them in NXT, and they were established names, and so. That was part of the formula, and I suppose that could still happen, but it's not happening as frequently. As frequently, there is no ROH, so that's not going to happen. But with, with, you know, it'd be Impact is really the only one that would be at that level, and you know, a lot of the guys in Impact are not guys they've either been through WWE or um, and wouldn't be a big deal going back, or um, in some cases, you know, if WWE really wanted them, um, they would have them, and clearly, you know, they don't. 
So it would, I, I guess the idea is it would take somebody super hot that's new in Impact and then going to NXT and also getting hot. That would be the kind of a thing or, or somebody just on the independent scene that's um, really good. The problem with, the ind- with, with, with on the independent scenes, we see people right away, so we're going to know who they are. Um, so, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, Braun Breaker is, is the, uh, the exception to the rule of a guy who walked in and became somebody. Um, I don't think we're going to be seeing guys like that very often. One other uh, quick note, then we got to wrap up the segment. Uh, Ricky Steamboat is returning to the ring? Shocked me, especially since... He wasn't uh, there for that flare retirement. He wouldn't do the flare retirement. He'd had major health issues. I guess he's fine now, but, I mean, he had years of problems. I mean, I, I remember he and I talking about it on more than one occasion. And that was, you know, and he's 69 years old. And, and again, if he was going to do something, I would think the flare thing would be the one you would want to do. But maybe um, maybe he felt if he's working with somebody younger that it would be better. I don't know. I was, But I was stunned. You know, I mean, he was a guy who, let's face it, Ricky Steamboat retired as a wrestler. He did the comeback with WWE, but he retired in 1994. 1994. That's a long time ago. Yes, it is. All right, we got to wrap this up. But, Dave, I want to thank you so much. The New Observer, 40,000 words of news and information every week up right now at WrestlingObserver.com. So check it out. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move where you grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected is a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny, but you've, you've said this now for 15 okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let, yeah. It, let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex. Right? No, a it's, suplex it's is suplex a suplex and not duplex. <laughs> oh, okay. Duplex <laughs> is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant's battle we, scars. We, we definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, no. Okay, no. all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says I, we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. <laughs> I protest. <laughs> he wrote the same one twice. <laughs> yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this time. Okay, far. fine. Read another one. Yeah, everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? <laughs> I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. <laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny, you did. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> go to go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you shut me off. No. Oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged the cord. I can't hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? <laughs> yeah, now I hear <laughs> <laughs> What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.